listening to BJ Hot Shot. Let's welcome our host. Our host. B E Double E. Hey, turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up. Double E. Hey, throw that good, good, and burn up, burn up, burn up, burn up, burn up. Double E. Double E. You know how we do. Uh huh, uh huh. BJ Hot Shot for you. Episode number 70, and we're right back for you. Yeah. Yes, 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 it is. B Jack Hip Pop Shop, episode number 70. Y'all know how we do. Represent for the crew. We got to run it back one more time. Just You're listening to B Jack's Hip Hop Shop. Let's welcome our host. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hey, turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up. Double E. Uh huh. Go that good, good. And burn up, burn up, burn up, burn up, burn up. Uh huh. You know how we do. Uh huh, uh huh. B Jack's Hip Hop Shop for you. Episode number 70, and we right back for you. Yeah, 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 y'all know how we do. Yo, you're listening episode, to DJ's DJ Hip Hop Shop. Episode number 70, let's get it into it. Yeah, 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 Big B Jack business right here. B Jack's hip hop shot episode number seventy, man. We're gonna do a little something like some 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 like this. First, you know, hold on before we get it go any further. I forgot last episode, so if you support the show, send a little dough, at least five dollars or more. Cash up us at B Jackson Profam NT. That's B Jackson Profam NT. Y'all gonna see it on the bottom of the screen for the rest of the episode. Alright now, let's do a little something like this. Get some music going. All right, B Jack's Hip Hop Shop, episode number 70. Let's get into it. Yeah. Uh huh. Let me adjust my mic. Pause. Yeah. I'm a little late with this episode, but that's for good cause. You know what I'm saying? I had to had to hang with my baby girl for her birthday. You know what I'm saying? Nine year old going on 19. Shout out to Layla. Happy birthday to my baby girl. Happy birthday to my baby girl. Early. My birthday is actually on the 16th of this month. And uh, of course, first and foremost, it is Black History Month. Even though a lot of uh, black entertainers are calling for uh, the removal of Black History Month because they say, well, you know, we should just enjoy black history all year round. And for that, I agree. But anyway, I'm only going to smoke during this, uh, during a family guy section. I'm trying not to smoke so much on camera, all right? My nerves is bad, all right? <laughs> smoke for, smoke for my nerves, all right? It's medicinal marijuana. It's medicinal, okay? <laughs> Let me put this out. All right. Episode number 70, man. Episode number 70. I appreciate y'all. Y'all know what time it is, man. Shout out to Anchor.fm. Shout out to Spotify. Shout out to Google Podcasts, Pocket Cast. Shout out to the YouTube channel, B Jack TV. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everybody that tunes in and listen, man. From the audio to the visual, once again, you want to make sure you take advantage of listening. Let me turn that down, son. You want to make sure that you take advantage of listening to the audio and watching the visual because, <clears throat> excuse me, because, um, it's hard, uh, excuse me, it's, 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 it's a different experience. It's re it really is a different experience from the video and the audio, all right? Y'all know what to do, man. Like, share, comment, get into it. All right, it's a lot to talk about, and since I am a whole day late, man, I need to get to it. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? You dig what I'm saying? All right, family guy, family guy, excuse me. We need to come clean our vents. We're having a little sinus pressure from the vents and shit. Um, yo, Family Guy. All right, let's get into it. Family Guy, let's get into it. Been getting great positive feedback from my class. Um, in my writing, I'm in a uh, reading class right now. One of my reading, excuse me, one of my classes is reading, and we got to do a lot of writing in there. You know, a lot of uh, posts for the whole class to see and uh respond to so it's i've been getting a lot of good feedback and i want to say you know thank you to everybody that's in my uh class that's been giving me good feedback because uh it's been amazing to 
Um, C. Excuse me. It's been amazing to uh, get feed, get the feedback that I've been getting. Everybody uh, is very, very, you know, family-like. And a few people that's in this class, you know, I've gotten other classes and everything. And since it's all virtual, you know, it's like I'm meeting new people online and everything, you know. Um, it's a great experience. I just want to say that. So shout out to the University of Arizona Global Campus, first and foremost. Um, doing good in school. Got an A minus in my uh, class right now. Uh, and I got a, a B minus average right now. Yeah, so the boy doing good. Um, it's forcing me to tell myself that while I have all this reading uh, and writing going on, that I need to write more. So you're going to get more music from B-Jack. You're going to get more podcasts, obviously, but you're also going to get a book real soon. Like, yeah, I'm working on my book real soon. All right, so stay tuned. You, know, you don't want to miss that. I'm going to uh, keep you up to date on that. And, um, oh, yeah, so I had uh, a visit with the eye doctor yesterday, and um, I already knew I, I got to wear glasses. You know, I should wear glasses more often, but, you know, <laughs> you know how I go, man. I'm just saying like that. Um, I do wear glasses. I do have a pair of glasses here, but um, my prescription um, is a little different now from the last time, obviously, that I um, went and had my uh, exam because it was a few years ago. So, basically, my uh, he, the doctor did say that I had a very, very high sensitivity to light, more so than others. So, um, he recommends, obviously, I wear more sunglasses. <laughs> but um, it's going to be in the prescription that I, you know, get my lenses tinted. And so I'm going to get the the, uh, the transitional lenses and all that. You know, I never, I never had them before, but I figured, you know what I'm saying, now that he said that I probably need to wear them a lot more often, that I will do so. So um, shout out to Shoreline Vision for helping a brother out. You know what I'm saying? All right, uh, me and Sassy walked up out of there. Couldn't even see him nothing, man. It was so bright yesterday, too. He was like, somebody help me to the car. <laughs> uh, all right, moving on. Um, so, Layla, it's Layla's birthday weekend. Um, well, next weekend is her birthday weekend. But this week, I got her. You know, Dad got to get her the week before Mama. You know, Mama got to have her on the, on the day of. So, it's all good. Um, she been hanging out with me all day, um, or for, for the, you know, weekend, and, um, we was on TikTok and everything, so if you see some TikToks out there, <laughs> just know I was happy. Um, alright, other than that, um, Layla is a gymnast, so salute to J uh, Layla for being a gymnast, and then Nene, Amicia is... A cheerleader, so salute to Nene for being a cheerleader, you know, uh, I'm a speaking height, so got one daughter in Kentwood, I believe she goes to a school in Kentwood, she's doing gymnastics out there, um, not for the school, I don't think, I think she's doing it for a different team, but, uh, and Nene, um, and, uh, Tanita, they go to the heights, so, uh, Nene is actually a cheerleader, uh, for the heights, Muskegon Heights, so salute to Muskegon Heights. Um, she dates one of the basketball players, you know what I'm saying, so. <laughs> oh, man, it's like that typical teenage movie love story, you know what I'm saying, the basketball player with the cheerleader and everything, so. <laughs> Shout out to Kamari, yeah, man. All right, moving on, moving on. Let's get, let's get into it, man. I don't want to hold you up. Viral moments of the week. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. So, I guess I'll close off Family Guy by saying, you know, your boy been working, and, um, I got some new music coming for y'all real soon, real soon, so stay tuned. Uh, working on working on the ProFam ENT uh, All-Stars compilation right now. But uh, let me move this back a little bit so I can get, get the lighting right. Um, working on the ProFam ENT compilation, but also um, working on my solo projects as well. You know, I got a lot of... A lot of hats that I'm wearing, so through the podcast, you know, I do my schooling. Obviously, I'm a father, um, and uh, yeah, man, we got a lot of uh, a lot of good things working. And I'm gonna work on this book. All right, so let's get into it, man. Viral moments 
of the week first. Hold on. Let me pause this. Gotta get my. All right, viral moments of the week. Y'all know how it go. Meek Mill speaks out against Atlantic Records over Roddy Rich. He says, hold on. Let me say that again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Meek Mill speaks out against Atlantic Records over Roddy Rich. He says they took him, took Roddy Rich away from him and gave him no credit for helping Roddy. And since everybody uh, who's under Atlantic right now and Warner, because I think Atlantic and Warner are pretty much one and the same right now, or, or two of those are pretty much the same right now because they are under the same umbrella. You feel what I'm saying? But uh, everybody got a gripe against Atlantic Records. So I'm going to just say, you know, I'm glad that I am independent. I don't got to worry about that. <laughs> but seriously, though, um, and more specifically, look, man, y'all got to understand what what the way that this record industry was designed. It ain't designed for the artist to prevail. It's not designed for the artist to make the most out of the situation. It's just not. It's more so for the labels to, um, you know, get get the, the best of the situation. I mean, they put up so much money up front to where it's like, it's ridiculous. I mean, if y'all really knew how much money these record labels are putting into these artists it's millions upon millions before the artist even makes a hit you feel what i'm saying so a lot of these artists never even recoup their uh their advances you know and um it's it's sad and it's unfortunate but with this situation okay meek mill gotta understand meek mill gotta understand that Atlantic Records, they did what they supposed to do, all right? But what you were supposed to do, Meek Mill, was sign on a dotted line or get it on a dotted line somewhere that you stand to gain some type of either monetary gain, you know what I'm saying? Well, definitely monetary gain, but um, some type of benefit from this. You should have had it in writing. You know, you can't trust these shysties, man, the, the shysters uh, of the industry because this is what they this is what they do. This is their job, you know what I'm saying? Sign talent and take advantage of them. So obviously they took advantage of him in this situation, but um, I think he gonna be, he gonna be all right because Roddy Rich, does, they do got a real relationship with each other, you know what I'm saying? Like a working relationship and even a, like I would say a, a music uh, friendship, you know what I mean, out of that situation, so, um, the fact that Meek Mill could at any time get a Roddy Rich feature, he should still take that, you know what I'm saying, into consideration, considering Roddy Rich is considerably bigger than Meek Mill now in a shorter amount of time, but after this, uh, uh, let's say, uh, flop sophomore album from Roddy Rich, do we think that he's bigger than Meek Mill now? Do we think that Roddy Rich is still bigger than Meek Mill, only having one project that is, you know, a big project, don't get me wrong, and it did well, extreme, exceedingly well, but his, his sophomore album was a, a jinx, you know what I'm saying? He, he basically proved that, uh, or he, he had the sophomore jinx, and nobody really fucked with that album. After I went back to listen to it, I'll say that there is more of that album that I like than, uh, you know, I originally thought you know upon like first and second listen even you know some of that shit grew on me but that's neither here nor there anyway um what y'all think man you think meek mill uh should get more props and credit for helping roddy rich blow up you know what i'm saying or you think he should just be thankful that you know he was able to help roddy rich and uh you know, be able to collaborate with Roddy Rich. What do y'all think, man? Um, get in the comments, comment and all that. This ain't gonna be one of the questions, but I will post some questions. All right, moving on, man, because we got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to talk about today. Um, let's do this. We're gonna get into Nick Cannon apologizing to his kids' mothers. 
for the pain and confusion. All right, so <laughs> let's get to it, man. Let's see. Let me get the audio queued up. All right, you're tuning to the most entertaining podcast on the planet. Yo, you're listening to DJ's DJ Pop Shop. You're tuning to the most entertaining podcast on the planet. Yo, you're listening to DJ's DJ Pop Shop. Pop Shop. All right, so we got the audio here. We're going to go off of um, Access Hollywood. You know, I did. I, I watched the Nick Cannon show, so I saw all of this uh, playing out um, in real time. Plus, you know, I, you know, I watched the show, so when he was going through it with the death of his son, Zen, like, just over a month ago, you know, me and Sassy was sitting here devastated, like, oh, man, you know, if we was to lose a child, you know how it would feel and all of that, you know, like, dang, and then, you know, just after a month or so of the grieving process of that, he's announcing that he's happy to announce that he has another child on the way, you know what I'm saying, and everybody was like, <laughs> <laughs> so, excuse me. All right, we're going to play this and then we're going to get into it. I actually would like to take a moment to just be to be honest and even take uh, uh, a moment to listen and reflect to what I was saying and what's popping in and apologize properly. Nick Cannon is making amends. The 41-year-old TV personality expressed regret for how he's discussed private family matters in public recently telling his daytime talk show viewers on Thursday that he's sorry for not handling certain personal situations more delicately and sending a specific apology to the mothers of his children. And I know I can do better when dealing with delicate and sensitive discussions. So I promise you, I promise the mothers of my children, I promise my family that I will do better and continue to be more understanding, caring, compassionate, like they often show me each and every day through these processes. Nick is currently expecting a baby boy with Brie Tisi, the little one will be his eighth child, and the news comes less than two months after the death of his and Alyssa Scott's son, Zed, who passed away from brain cancer in December at just five months old. Yeah, now that was sad. Nick had know. tearfully shared about the tragedy on air just days after Zed's loss. He confirmed Bree's pregnancy on Monday's show, acknowledging that facing both experiences at the same time has been an emotional upheaval he wasn't sure how to navigate. I can imagine. You can only imagine what it's like to lose a child and then giving birth to another child. You feel me? That quick, that short, in that short period of time. A while now, before my youngest son Ben passed in December, and so even going through all of that, this was always in the back of my mind. Like, when is the right time? How do I share this? You know, no one. We didn't expect Zen to pass away. There's never a right time. You know, all of the news was so unexpected. So to kind of figure out a chronological order or a hierarchy. It just, it, it kept me up at night. Earlier this week. Yeah, man, so that's gonna be the question, man. What do y'all think about Nick Cannon having another child so soon, so shortly after the loss of his son, of his seventh son, Zen? In the comments, man, and um, on anchor.fm and Spotify, in the comment box uh, for the community, uh, go ahead and comment what y'all think about this whole Nick Cannon situation. Do y'all do y'all feel like he needs to apologize for the way that he's living? Meaning, you know, clearly he's not in a. Uh, he, he he's got to be. He's literally polyamorous. All right, he just had uh, the loss of his son Zen with one woman. And now he's saying, you know, you know, he's having a whole another baby, his eighth child, with a whole another woman. Do you do you care about this at all? You know what I'm saying? And do y'all, or do y'all think people should just mind their business? Do you? But the question I'll put down there is, do y'all think Nick Cannon should apologize for his way of life? Do you think he should apologize? Because I don't think he should apologize. Um, to anybody but his kids' mothers, you know what I'm saying, for maybe maybe hurting them, for maybe being insensitive to them, because I don't think nobody else really cares, you know, everybody else is having babies out of wedlock, and, and they're not able to take, they ain't able to take care of their kids, they can't pay child support and everything, they can at least can, can pay financially, 
and can pay to have other people around his children and the baby mother so that they're well taken care of and everything. But what do y'all think, man? Do y'all think that, you know, uh, Nick Cannon is insensitive to his baby mamas at all? You know, get in the comments and let me know. Um, all right, moving on. <clears throat> we're going we're gonna to get into this real quick. Hot 97's Drewski declares he will not play any New York drill music in his set. Then Ebro doubles down and says that the radio station uh, and the fans are to uh, blame for, you know, the violence in the drill, the New York drill sound. Because uh, an artist just passed away and I don't, you know, don't want to uh, be offended or, or offensive, but I forget the artist's name because I'm not familiar with him. But um, yeah, this is a big deal. So this is the same situation with, you know, a lot of the music that's going on uh, in Florida, even, and, and it's a different sound and a different style. But putting the crimes, this is what I said on one of the episodes before, so I'm going to ask it again. How do you feel about artists making music that literally promotes the crimes that have actually happened. How do you feel about artists making music that promote crimes that have actually happened? Um, get into the comments and that'll be the second comment for the day. Um, Hot 97 basically saying we're not playing no New York drill music because anything they got woo and sue and, and some other things you know, and I don't want to misquote him, but he said certain things that are, he, he said, I know if they saying certain things, it's some gang relativity there, and I'm not going to be a part of uh, that culture because it's, it's making people kill people. It, it literally is. And music is energy, so y'all need to get hip if y'all think that, you know, um, you're not being influenced by the music, you're wrong. You know, so it's a big deal, and I want to say, you know, Kudos to Hot 97 for being responsible because we are responsible as the fans and the um, the consumers of this music to say, no, nah, enough is enough. We're not going to be listening to music that actually is taunting the dead. You know what I'm saying? The same people that they're killing, they're making songs about and making them songs popular as fuck, talking about we smoking on this person and smoking on that person. The shit is foul, it's fucked up, and it needs to stop. You know what I'm saying? So salute to Hot 97 for, you know... Um, jumping ahead of this and declaring that they will not play none of that drill music um, in their uh, sets. So, salute to Hot 97. Alright, that's it for the viral moments of the week. Yeah, man. So, alright, when we get back, when we get back, I'm about to take a quick break. When we get back, we got more hip-hop hop, excuse me, more hip-hop shop for you. Alright, it's your boy Big B Jack right here on the Most Entertaining Podcast. On the planet. Yo, you're listening to DJ and DJ and Pop Shop. Pop Shop. We'll be right back. To the most entertaining podcast on the planet. <laughs> DJ Jack to Pop Shop, baby, baby. Let's get it going. Let's get it going. We right back like we never left. Yo, you're listening to BJ's, 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 All right, we about to get into the loaded clip segment. Loaded clip, loaded clip. Y'all know how it go. I don't know why I keep going. All right, there we go. There we go. Now we back. All right. Let's get into the loaded clip segment. All right, here we go. Here we go. Loaded clip, man, for episode 70. We're going to do it like this. Let's talk about... Whoopi Goldberg suspension from The View for two weeks for insensitive remarks uh, on the Holocaust being not about race, but about mankind's inhumanity to mankind itself, um, causing such a stir that ABC um, 
has reportedly suspended her for two weeks. Now, do y'all even think that she deserves to be suspended for two whole weeks? You know, she is losing upwards of $200,000 for these two weeks. Yeah, she's losing upwards of $200,000 in her salary uh, for losing out on two weeks. And um, just a little backstory on Whoopi Goldberg. So I never knew, you know, well, I knew that Whoopi Goldberg wasn't her real name, but I never knew the origins of it. And it said that she got the name Whoopi because she would fart so much during her stand-up act that people said she was like a Whoopi cushion. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious, man. That's hilarious. Um, born Karen Elaine Johnson on November 13, 1955 in New York City, Goldberg got off to a rough start as she battled dyslexia and drug addiction. She got sober and married her drug counselor, Alvin Martin, in 1973. They were married for six years and welcomed daughter Alexandria Martin before divorcing in 1979. Uh, yeah, so it also says that, you know, uh, her salary for The View is estimated around five to six million dollars. Which means that she's roughly losing out on roughly two hundred thousand dollars. It's about one hundred and ninety-two thousand dollars, I think they said all together. You know what I'm saying for missing uh, the episodes of the season. So, do y'all think that you know the punishment is fair, considering that she apologized the very, I think the same episode or the very next day, something like that. But um, she also was willing to sit down with you know. Jewish people, the Jewish community, to get a further understanding of the Holocaust and everything. And I think that's what society has been missing. So I want to say, you know, bravo and kudos and hats off to Whoopi Goldberg. Um, if you're on YouTube, you see I'm rocking a baldy. <laughs> that's, that's another story for another day. Um, I'm getting into character, okay? <laughs> no, uh, anyway. Whoopi Goldberg, you know, I don't feel should have been um, punished in this way. I feel like there shouldn't be a punishment for somebody correcting their own mistakes and then owning up to those mistakes and um, literally, let's say, opening up that conversation because I feel what's missing. That's what I was getting to. I feel what's missing in society is the ability to open up those conversations with the likes of the people who feel offended in the first place. Excuse me. I'm going to say that again. I feel like what's missing in society is mankind's inability or unwillingness to want to open up that conversation, period. Meaning, when we are fit, when, when most people get offended they want to be offended and then run off and, and, and you know uh, uh, you know let's say call a person out who they feel offended by but they never actually allow the person who is the offender to not defend themselves but to you know correct their behavior if they so choose to which a lot of times people don't choose to correct their behavior is people want to stand on what they believe in even if they're wrong a lot of times people look They'll, they'll say, you know, no, nah, I'm right because I could have been right. Then they get home and they say, you know, I was wrong, but I'm never going to admit that. You know what I'm saying? So I feel what's wrong is or what's missing in society is exactly what she did, which is, you know, um, open up the conversation with the Jewish community so that she could get a further understanding of how they felt about the situation. Because, you know, we're, we're outsiders looking in if you're not of the Jewish community. You know what I'm saying? But, um... Anyway, do y'all feel like it was a, a a suitable punishment, I guess, is the question that I ask. Um, and I'm not going to put this in the community uh, box, but uh, y'all can get in the comments um, and, and even in the community box if there's room, you know, and, and just ask, uh, answer that question. But get into the comments on YouTube, BJAC TV, subscribe and all that, man. Um, and, and, and really talk about this and let's let's talk about how this conversation for me opened up the conversation that we should be having more conversations so that everybody could get a clear understanding of how 
we look at each other and how we look at each other's history um, and, and how we want our history to be looked at and, and viewed at. You know, so it's, it's a deep, deep conversation that is not going nowhere because this is about race, religion, and a whole bunch of other things that, you know, we are always going to be juggling and dealing with in this, com in this country and in the world because it is a melting pot now. Everybody is not just one size fits all. You got, you know, black and Jewish people, you know, you got Jewish and, uh, you know, Asian people, you know, it's all types of different, you know, blends of people and mixes of people. So we're at a point in society where a lot of things should be spoken on. And one of those things is history and how it should be dealt with and how it should be spoken of and how, you know, who who's the gatekeeper of the history for each group. It should be that group, you know what I mean? So I feel like, you know, while Whoopi Goldberg's uh, remarks may have been insensitive, I don't feel like, you know, her being suspended for two weeks was an appropriate reaction. I'll say that. I don't feel like it was an appropriate reaction. I feel like the proper reaction would be to have the Jewish community come on the show and, and assist her in understanding why they feel differently than her perspective. You feel me? That's and, and, and honestly, I can leave it at that. You know, Whoopi Goldberg is a very beloved uh, actress in hip hop. I mean, excuse me, in Hollywood, not just of the black community, but period. You know what I'm saying? She's done movies with everybody from uh, Patrick Swayze to, uh, you know, you name it. She, uh, uh, she, she is just one of those people who exudes um, courtesy and respect. So I don't think she was trying to be disrespectful. And I think that once again, her being willing to open up to the conversation is the proper response. And I feel like, you know, the, that's the proper way to handle things. And I feel like, you know, she did that correctly. She instantly apologized for her insensitive remarks. And then she opened up the conversation to the Jewish community. And that's how you're supposed to do it. You know, don't close people off. Don't close the people off that feel offended by you. Open up the lane and open up the communication so that y'all can get a clear understanding of each other. You know what I'm saying? That's how I do it. Moving on, moving on. B Jack Hip Hop Shop. Uh, all right. From Whoopi Goldberg, we gonna get into some uh, lighter subject, lighter topic. Uh, Pusha T post makes people think that he was done with good music. <laughs> Is Pusha T done with good music? <laughs> no. <laughs> or at least that's not. Or at least that's not what um, the post was about. Apparently, the post was paperwork that pretty much states that Pusha T gets his masters back from Def Jam. Which means that he is about to deliver his final and last album with Def Jam slash Good Music. Because he signed with both of them, you know what I mean, together. So I would imagine that his last deal with Def Jam would also be his last de uh, album with... Uh, with um good music but you know he always got an option to sign back i just wonder if the the, the current climate with him and uh yay uh considering that yay is now back friends and back cool with drake <laughs> push the t's arch nemesis <laughs> how is how is this gonna play out you know what i'm saying will push a t um, stay on good music now once again his next album will be his final with both good music and Def Jam And I'd imagine that he probably will stay with good music because he's the president of good music You know what I mean unless he quits that position all, all based off of you know Let's say Kanye and Drake getting back cool. Who's to say though? Who is to say? I don't know um, What do y'all think once again give me comments? Do y'all think that Pusha T is going to leave good music or um, is he going to sign back with good music and uh, will he have any bars for 
the reconciliation of Drake and Kanye. I kind of feel like, um, you know, considering the fact that he won a Grammy with the Kanye West produced album Daytona a few years ago, you know, make some noise for that. Salute to him for that. I think that he probably feels like, you know, and I don't know, because I, th I, I would imagine he signed for at least five six albums because I believe this is his fifth or sixth album and this is his last with Dev Jam good music. I think that um I think Pusha T we might see Pusha T switch it up. You know what I'm saying? Who knows? I don't know. He has a lot of friends in the uh, hip hop community so he could go wherever he wants. He could do whatever he wants. You know the reality is he can go wherever he wants uh, because who's not gonna accept an artist whose last album was a Grammy Award winner. You feel what I'm saying? You feel what I'm saying? Um, all right. Other than that, uh, he got his masters back, which is an amazing thing. You know what I'm saying? And, and that only happens after you know you give the labels what they want, which usually is their money. You know what I'm saying? He must have recoup. He must have recouped that bread. <laughs> now. I say, you know, salute and congratulations to Pusha T on that one. Do y'all think he's going to have a good, do y'all think his next album is going to be a banger or is it going to be a dud? You know what I'm saying? Who's to say? But if you heard the snippet that's floating around, then you probably think that it's going to be a banger. I personally feel like, you know, Pusha T makes great music. I just would like for him to delve more into the pop world, you know what I'm saying, sometimes. I ain't saying that he got to do a whole album like that, but you know, when I'm listening to the album, I at least want that album to reach a certain peak of intensity, lyrically and, you know, emotionally even, for me, and production-wise too, you know, it's like, it's the beginning, you know, the middle, and then the, uh, the, the, the arch, and then the ending, you know what I'm saying, it's like, I want that, I want, I want that record from him that just goes over the top that when I turn it on you know it makes me I feel like you know Biggie I mean excuse me Pusha ain't got what Biggie had which is like a Juicy or a Big Papa you know what I'm saying a very defining song that's also a feel good song you know what I'm saying for, for everybody I feel like his most notorious songs are all you know coke rap records <laughs> yo and, and I appreciate it you know I do but that's the only thing I feel like is missing from Pusha T discography. Other than that, you know, I do love Pusha T. Um, but do y'all think that he gonna put out a new album? And do y'all think he gonna continue to diss Drake? Knowing that Drake and, and Kanye is now joining forces. Or will he, let's say, leave good music and have bars for both of their ass? You get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? I think he might fuck around and surprise everybody and this last album with good music He might hint at the fact that this is gonna be his last project with good music as opposed to staying with good music But who's to say we're gonna find out and I'm gonna stay up to I'm gonna keep y'all up to date on this But that post on Twitter uh, was not Him leaving good music per se. It was the fact that he got his masters back from Def Jam So and that this will be his last album with Def Jam. So salute to Pusha T for you know giving us stellar music over the course of the last couple decades, you know what I'm saying, with him uh, as a solo artist and um, part of the clip. So, salute push T. Moving on, moving on. All right, so four people have been charged in the death of Michael K. Williams. Four people have been charged in the death of Michael K. Williams, the uh, actor, the late actor was um, found dead in his New York apartment, dead of an overdose, and the people who um, served him those drugs are now behind bars. Reports say that the heroin was laced with fentanyl, and one of the dealers happened to have already had an ongoing dealing situation with the undercover officer and that's how they caught the rest of them yeah so y'all need to be care uh, careful out here all y'all dealers man mess around with that fentanyl whoo they they they, they stroking y'all man pause no homo they 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 giving it to you raw with no vaseline man straight up um so be careful man be cautious out here you know real talk 
be careful and cautious, but first and foremost, you know, let's say rest in peace to Michael K. Williams. This is, you know, a big deal, and I'm going to tell you why. Michael K. Williams was not the first actor to die of an overdose. He's not going to be the last one. But what this is going to do is make it to where a lot of people, you, you might see a lot, you might see some actors and, and uh, entertainers turn around and end up being, you know, confidential informants. And I'm going to say why. Michael K. Williams probably was not alone. You know what I mean? And let's just say he ain't the only person that's capping from these dealers because, you know, it's like when you get to a certain stature in life and, and you know, society period to where everybody looks at you as a celebrity, there's only so many people that, you know, you could deal with. Like, there was a joke on, I want to say, maybe Dave Chappelle or something where it was like, um... Bobby Brown's drug dealer or something like that must be the richest man in the world. Or Whitney Houston's drug dealer must have been the richest person in the world or whatever, something like that. But, you know, we laugh about it, but the reality is is that there are, there are cartels and all of that that's involved in this situation. And these four people are always just the tip of the iceberg because they just the dealers. There's, there's, there's other people that's behind them and all of that. So... This is probably going to lead to more deaths. I, I mean, not more deaths, but excuse me, more um, arrests in the future uh, related to, you know, this group of individuals um, dealing more drugs to other actors and stuff. And, you know, I'm telling you, this is just, this is something that is setting a precedence because it's one of the first times that we've had a very popular actor die of an overdose and so quickly we see the turnaround of them catching the people who are responsible for it for dealing the drugs that kill the actor you feel what i'm saying so um stay tuned man because i'm gonna keep you up to date on this whole situation um they lacing everything with fentanyl man i'm reading reports that they lacing marijuana with fentanyl you feel what i'm saying it's like how you gonna you lacing the weed with fentanyl? It's crazy, man. And they sound like a little sliver of that stuff could kill you. You know what I'm saying? So y'all gotta be careful out here. All y'all people that do, you know, any type of hard drugs, you know, who are addicted, you know, I would just say to y'all, you know, get some help if you are addicted. You know, wouldn't want nobody to die from an overdose, uh, especially an accidental overdose because a lot of these people don't know that they're buying fentanyl laced drugs you feel what i'm saying so you got to be cautious you got to be safe out here in these streets real talk real okay. talk you got to be safe if you if you yourself or anybody else uh is addicted to drugs you know there are hotlines in your area that you can uh hit up to seek help you know what I mean? So if you are um, an addict and you think that you need help or you know somebody that needs help, um, Google drug addiction counseling and services in your area. You know, uh, I want to throw that disclaimer out there at the end of this conversation because Michael K. Williams, you know, passing away from an overdose um, of heroin laced with fentanyl is a big deal. And um, it should be reflected, you know, that he's a black man once again probably living in a high-rise uh uh very spiffy neighborhood neighborhood in new york because he is well off you know so this can happen to anybody you know so once again you know if you or anybody are experiencing drug addiction or alcohol addiction you know there are counselors and people in your area that can help you um please uh google just, you know, drug addiction and things like that. But yeah, man, what y'all think about this? The four people that are charged with the death of Michael K. Williams. How much time y'all think that he, they should get? You know what I'm saying? Y'all think they should get life for this? You know, they killed somebody, you know, whether accidentally or not. You sold him drugs and he passed away. You know what I'm saying? So what y'all think about that? Um. All right, I'm going to take a quick pause for the cause 
And uh, when I come right back, I got one more topic and a loaded clip. And then we're going to get into some music, man, for this week. There's a lot of music that came out this week. We got new 2 Chains. We got new 2 Chains. We got New York Gotti. Uh, LMA came back to the music scene this week. You don't want to miss that. All right, stay tuned. It's your boy, Big B Jack. B Jack's Hip Hop Shop, baby, baby. We'll be right back. There we go. All right, we back at it. Getting back to the loaded clip. Um, this just happened like yesterday. Um, Aquafina. Y'all know the Asian actress. Let me see. Um, she go by Aquafina. She's a comedian. She's an actress. I know you've seen her in a lot of things. I mean, I, I'm trying to think of one specific thing that she's known for. She plays Nora in something. Maybe that's the name of the show. But anyway. She's trending because... She's trending because she's getting called out uh, by people that say that she's using black scent and ass in her comedy to, thank you, to a negative degree. Um, and so she put up this big post, and I don't know how it started. You know, I'm going to be fair and I'm going to say I don't know how it started. I was looking for it, <coughs> but what I found was even more interesting so I have a YouTube uh, clip pulled up of this guy breaking it down and you know I'll just say this I'm gonna play I'm gonna read her comment first and then I'm gonna play the clip and then we're gonna get all the way into it right here on BJ Set Pop shot load of clip baby because uh, this is a big deal. Aquafina is a comedian that I like, you know what I'm saying, actually. Like, I see her in a lot of things, and I'm trying to remember specific things that I've seen her in, but I kind of like the fact that she acts like a New Yorker. It's something, to me, I didn't think that she was acting like she was black. I thought I felt like she was acting like a, a ghetto New Yorker, realistically uh, and, and honestly. But people are calling her out for her black scent and her abs, you know, which is... African American vernacular. Um, I forgot what the last part. <laughs> oh, my bad, my bad. I was supposed to be, was supposed to be on it. Was supposed to be on it. But um, okay, here we go. So I do have an uh, an article by the Hollywood Reporter, and I'm gonna read the Hollywood Reporter's article, and then I'm gonna get into it. So Aquafina addresses black scent, ab, and cultural appropriation criticisms. Um, in a lengthy message published to Twitter on Saturday, Nora Lum acknowledged the fine line between offensive and pop culture, but claims her use of Av never was meant to mock, belittle, or to be unkind to black people. That's what she said. I'm just quoting, telling y'all what, what she said. Aquafina returned to Twitter after a two-year absence on Saturday to address long-standing criticisms over her use of a black scent and appropriation of black culture. In a statement that also indicated that she would be retiring from Twitter, yeah, the crazy rich Asians in Shang, uh, Shang Chai and the Ten, Ten Ring Star denies that her use of Av or African American vernacular English, as well as her black scent, a voice that stereotypically imitates forms of black American dialect were meant to mock black people. She's denying that, you know, her black scent and the way that she talks and everything, you know, because she, she don't just speak that way, she acts that way, you know what I'm saying? And I'm going to say she acts ghetto in a sense, you know what I'm saying? Like a black ghetto person, snapping her fingers, rolling her eyes the whole night, you know what I'm saying? All of that. Um... So, it says, all the while having historically and routinely seen their culture stolen. Okay, all right, I'm going to read the actual tweets now. Because I'm on Twitter. All right, I'm on Twitter right now. Uh, if you're on Twitter, then go follow me, uh, bjack616. 
You know what I'm saying? That's how we do it. All right. So here is the tweets from Aquafina, a.k.a. Nora Lum. And it goes, and I quote. Let me turn the music down. There is a socio-political context to everything, especially the historical context of the African-American community in this country. It is a group that is disproportionately affected by institutionalized policies and law enforcement policies, all the while having historically and routinely seen their culture stolen, exploited, and appropriated by the dominant culture for monetary gain without acknowledgement nor respect for whose for those roots, for where those roots come from, excuse me, the pioneers of its beginnings and the artists that perfected and mastered the craft. It is a problem we still see today, though some may pass it off as a convoluted mixture of the internet TikTok slang generation that liberally uses AV to add to, add to that hip hop, a genre of music that is ubiquitous and beloved across the country has now anchored itself as a mainstream genre in music history and in life linguistic acculturation immigrant acculturation and the inevitable passage of globalized internet slang all play a factor in the fine line between offensive and pop culture but as a non-black poc i stand to, i stand by the fact that i will always listen to and will tirelessly and tirelessly to understand the history and context of AV, what is deemed appropriate or backwards toward the progress of any and every marginalized group. But I must emphasize to mock, belittle, or to be unkind in any way possible at the expense of others is simply not my nature. It never has and it never was. My immigrant background allowed me to carve an American identity off the movies and TV shows I watched the children I went to public school with, and my undying love and respect for hip-hop. I think as a group, Asian Americans are still trying to figure out what, they, what that journey means for them, what is correct, and where they don't belong. And though I'm still learning and doing that personal work, I know for sure that I want to spend the rest of my career doing nothing but uplifting communities, uh, excuse me, our communities, we do this first by failing, learning, acknowledging, hearing, and empathizing, and I will continue tirelessly to do that. End quote. And then she followed that up with three hours later. Well, I'll see you in a few years, Twitter. Per my therapist, to my fans, thank you for continuing to love and support someone who wishes they could be a better person for you. I apologize if I ever fell short in anything I did. You're in my heart always. Heart emoji. <sighs> that was the half-ass apology right there. Yeah. Because um, it says, and I quote once again, I apologize if I ever fell short in anything I did. That's not acknowledgement. That's saying, if you think that I was wrong, then I was wrong. You feel what I'm saying? I, I get it. I get it. To clarify, she continues. She came back with another post real quick. <laughs> she came back with another post um, to clarify, as she stated. <clears throat> Excuse me. To clarify, I am retiring from the ingrown toenail that is Twitter. <laughs> Not retiring from anything else. Even if I wanted to and I didn't drunkenly hit someone with a shoehorn, <laughs> and, is, and now escaping as a fugitive also am available on all other socials that don't tell you to yourself end quote that was Aquafina's apology for her black use her, excuse me her black saint use and essentially cultural appropriation and majority of her comedy research Aquafina, do your Googles and you'll see that majority of her um, comedy, whether it's movies, um, whether it's her stand-up, she does have a very cultural appropriate uh, uh, sort of uh, shtick, period. Like, it's, it's like that's her thing. I honestly thought it was like because she was from New York, you know, because, like, whatever show that she's on where her name is Aquafina or whatever, any freaking way, 
I'm gonna have to look that up. Let me see. Uh, hey Siri, show me Aquafina. Now she, she don't go to iTunes store. All right, so she also has music. <laughs> she also has music. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's all I need to hear. Um, <laughs> that's all I need to hear right there. <laughs> so it's safe to say that majority of the things that Aquafina does appropriates black culture. But a lot of things do and a lot of people do. Once again, she is, uh, how old? Let me see. How old is Aquafina? But anyway, uh, she she pretty much states in there like where all of her personality comes from is what she's ex what she's describing in that. And I'll say, you know, obviously it's not a clear um, it's not a clear and definitive apology per se. But I think that. What is interesting is that she was telling us that this is America. This is America. And since hip hop is now what used to be rock and roll, you know, the most popular culture, uh, excuse me, the most popular music in pop culture, essentially, that this is where she learned to be this way. And I don't know if that makes it easier on me or, or harder for me. But I do, I do think that it is a plausible and a real explanation of who a lot of us identify with as in this country is more so with the music that we listen to. And like she said, the movies that she listened to, being an immigrant, you know what I'm saying? She's a POC immigrant, as she said, as she stated herself. So what do y'all think about this? Matter of fact, this going to be the, the, main, the main one in the community for Anchor and Spotify. Uh, specifically for it for y'all do y'all honestly because this is gonna be the biggest thing uh, all month trust me because it happened literally five days into black history month how could you not see that it was gonna be an issue <laughs> how could you not see that was gonna be a problem for you so the main the main question I want to ask you know uh, Aquafina should she be canceled is she appropriating? Do y'all feel like Aquafina is appropriate in black culture with her form of uh, comedy in the way that she is expressing herself through, let's say, hip hop slang and uh, mannerisms, the whole nine. Like she is a. It's hard to say she's just appropriating a culture if she has literally been influenced by it her whole life. You feel what I'm saying? That's the difference, and that's why we gave Eminem a pass for being such a ill rapper. Not not a pass, I don't want to say that, but why we give Eminem credit because he doesn't try to act like he's black. You feel what I'm saying? He is who he is. He, he could just rap his ass off. He ain't the most ghetto person if you if you hear him speak in his normal voice though. You feel what I'm saying? So, um, but anyway, what y'all think about this? Is Aquafina should she be canceled? You know, is she appropriating co uh, black culture? Do you feel like she's uh, you know uh, insensitive to black folks who say that she is even? You know, because at the end of the day, the people who are offended depending on what it is, you know, tend to be right, you know, most of the time. So in the comments, man, tell me what y'all think about this. Is Aquafina, aka Nora Lum, uh, 
has she been appropriating black culture? Do you think she's been appropriating black culture, or do you think that this is just who she is, being an immigrant uh, and moving from, you know, wherever she's from, excuse me, uh, to New York and growing up in New York? Hip-hop, New York is significantly hip-hop and has been for the last 20, 30 years now. So, therefore, if somebody comes from another country and all they know is New York English, it's no different than if we, if, if I moved to London, uh, let's say, and all I know then would be, let's say, uh, what the people in whatever town that I moved to, their type of slang would, would you know, sound like. So, it's hard, man. I'm going to just say, I'll reserve judgment. I do feel like it is bad, bad timing, considering, once again, man, it's Black History Month. <laughs> can't be sitting around acting like black people during Black History Month and don't think you're not going to get attacked. <laughs> uh, they're coming for you, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like Aquafina, you know, expressing the fact that this is who she is, I think is a good thing, is a good start. I do feel like, you know, we need to see her with some of her black peers amongst Hollywood who, you know, can ask her some hard-hitting questions that she needs to answer for the rest of her fan base and for the rest of the world who probably just want to hear the answer you know because while i am a fan of hers i'm a casual fan because obviously i can't even tell you what the name of the show is that i knew her from originally but she has a lot of things that she does uh comedy wise and so i know her from that anyway all right moving on man moving on let's get to it we're gonna keep it going i can feel it, man she they trying to cancel her, but she basically left Twitter any damn way, so can you cancel what isn't there? I don't think so. Alright. Alright. Let's get it going. Keep it going. New releases, man. Alright, we got new music. We got new music to talk about. And, um... Since I'm doing the YouTube now, I'm not even going to play the clip. I did listen to these mu these albums. You know, I do my little, I'm, I'm about to get my review going, my album review uh, back going. And um, I'm just trying to fine tune it and, and make sure it's right before I, you know, bring it to the light. All right, so new album releases for you. All right, today is February 5th, 2022. And rightfully so, your boy 2 Chains. It's dropped, has dropped new music. Dope Don't Sell Itself is out right now, and it features the likes of Moneybag Yo, Beat King, Lil Baby, Roddy Rich, 42 Dub, Young Boy Never Broke Again, Lil Dirk, Sleepy Rose, uh, Stove God Cooks, Simba, Major Maija, and Jacquees. All right? Now, I listened to this album a few times over yesterday. And yes, this album is dope. 2 Chainz says this is his last trap album, so you don't want to miss this. All right, 2 Chainz, Dope Don't Sell Itself is out right now. He got um, two videos out. The first one got Money Bag Yo and B-King on it. Go check that out. All right, moving on. Next up, we got Memphis Legend. Memphis Legend and the boss of Memphis, the boss of the North. Yo Gotti, free game, side A and side B. Now, one side is all Yo Gotti except for one feature with Shinsia. That project, that part of the album, I really love. Yo Gotti is on point with it. The production is on point. Lyricism on point. He did a good job of putting the songs in the right order and everything. The other part of the album has all the features on it. And the features include, obviously, CMG affiliates and artists, 42 Doug. DSTG, Moneybag Yo, Black Youngster specifically. But then he also got Kodak Black and then Shinsia to round out the whole project. All in all, it's 22 tracks. It is a double album. And like I said, the one side that got all just Gotti on it, except for the Shinsia feature, that's the one that I rock with the most. But the whole project is pretty fucking dope. Yo Gotti delivers a solid album, CM10. CM10, Cocaine Music 10, 10 is 10, it's out, it's out, and it's dope. It's a double album. Go check it out if you haven't. Um, like I said, I'm not going to play it because we're on YouTube now. Uh, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Make sure you subscribe. 
Uh, and I don't want to get no strikes, so I'm only playing music that I produced. You dig what I'm saying? You dig what I'm saying? All right. Plus, they don't pay me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, also, um, the artist who won the Dollar for Dollar Challenge uh, came uh, or has been announced by being featured on the project, and his name is 10%. I'm going to have to look him up, but 10% is a hell of a name. <laughs> um, but shout out to 10% for winning the, con the contest. Let me see. Um, let, me, let me search him real quick. Yeah, so go check out Yo Gotti CM10. I never, I haven't heard of the guy. I ain't even gonna look him up right now. Uh, I'll look him up for later. Actually, let me, let me see. I'm gonna look him up on Twitter real quick. Let's look him up on Twitter. You gotta be on Twitter. All the artists. Uh, the new artists on Twitter. Ten percent. Too many people ain't 10% on there. Too many people ain't 10% on Twitter. So I'll look them up another time. But <laughs> salute to 10% for winning the Yo Gotti Dollar for Dollar Challenge. Y'all heard about it. Y'all seen it. Y'all hear it everywhere. Uh, he had people in the prisons doing the damn challenge, yo, man. Salute to Yo Gotti. Dope ass way to uh, build a buzz for your album, your last project. He's saying it's his last project. Now, 2 Chainz said that was his last trap album. But this is going to be Yo Gotti's last album over, overall, all together. And, and rightfully so. He's uh, he, he's put in time in this game over 20 years. And now he got the likes of 42 Doug, ESTG, and Money Back Yo to sit back and executive produce. So it's with Yo Gotti. I've been rocking with Yo Gotti since I was a teenager. What up, talk? Um, all right, moving on. We got singles, new singles, Nicki Minaj and Lil Baby. Do we have a problem? It's number one on trending. Go watch the video. It's like a mini movie. All right. Um, Nicki Minaj and Lil Baby, do we have a problem? That video is dope. The song is dope itself. The song is really dope. Nicki Minaj is back, if y'all was wondering. If you was wondering, Nicki Minaj is back. Okay, what I'm saying? And she came back with two joints. Actually, there's another song called Bussin' with Lil Baby uh, that's in there, too. Um, but anyway, you know, she broke it down with uh, Zane Lowe from uh, Apple Music. Go check that podcast out. Yo, she's on a run, so I do believe that we're going to get a full-length album from the Queen, Nicki Minaj, pretty soon. The video features Joseph Sakura from Power and uh, the new show, Force, that's about to jump off on Star. So go check that out if you haven't. It's Actually, I think uh, Force is going to start tomorrow. Actually, yes. Yeah, so, uh, so check that out. Um, it's Black History Month, baby, so, you know, it's all about uh, empowering uh, black, uh, the black artists and, and creatives and uh, the businesses and everything. So, yeah, man, salute to Nicki Minaj making a comeback during Black History Month, a little baby. Dope-ass video, go check it out. Uh, moving on, next single that you got to listen to is King Von and 21 Savage, Don't Play That. Now, I will say, full disclaimer, full disclaimer, um... I typically don't promote no songs that's talking about we smoking on so-and-so, this, that, and the third, because I know what that means. I'm not promoting none of that shit on my platform, because I don't do that in my music. You feel what I'm saying? And I don't represent what they represent. But this song is a must-listen to, no doubt. You know what I'm saying? I do like that song. King Von and 21 Savage don't play that dope track. 21 Savage can't do no wrong. I rock with 21. He did a good job. Moving on, YG, J. Cole, and Moneybag Yo drop Scared Money. Scared Money don't make no money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And this song is pretty fucking dope. Go check out Scared Money um, by YG, J. Cole, and Moneybag Yo. All right, moving on. I'm going to keep it moving, keep it funky. Uh, the last, but, and last but not least, Ella May makes her return to music with DFMU. Don't fuck me up. Single and video. Go check the video. Song is dope. R&B music is back in a major way. Shout out to Ella May. Or Ella Mai. How do you say name? Alright, alright. Now that's it for the new releases. That is it for the new releases. Um, we got a few more minutes. I was going to try to get to the sports. And then do a... Um, 
level up your lifestyle. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do since it's 25 minutes in. We're gonna do it like this. It's Saturday. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a quick pause for the cars because uh, the audio I break into uh, sec uh, segments of you know up to 30 minutes a piece on Anchor.fm. Uh, so I'm gonna pause for the cars because I'm at about uh, I'm just about you know time for a quick break and then when I get right back I'm gonna have uh, the NBA schedule and standings for y'all for uh, the first week of February. We'll be right back. All right, B Jacks Hip Hop Shop, baby, baby. All right, we right back. We right back. And I did have a clip that I was gonna do. Um, uh, Aquafina for the Aquafina segment um, that I was just talking about uh, but I'll play it on the next episode because I'm going to get back into that whole topic man because that topic is something that is a big deal um, especially during Black History Month I'm sure we haven't heard the last of it so we're going to keep that uh, we're going to keep that coming back We'll come back to report on that at a later date. All right, here we go. We're going to keep it moving, man. We're about to get up out of here. But before we go, we got sports news. All right, sports news. We're going straight to NBA. For my NBA fans, this is for y'all. We're going to go with the top headlines right now. Uh, LeBron James is out with a knee injury, a game-time decision versus the Knicks. Uh, for later on tonight will be, you know, they're going to decide at the end you know, before the game, if he gonna play or not. Clip, Clippers don't know if PG uh, or Kawhi will return this season. Nets not pushing panic button after the same seven game skid. <laughs> Brown leaves Wizards to be Ravens president. Okay. Clips acquire power from Blazers and five player swap. Bucks sign center Monroe to 10 day contract. Oh. Shit. Ingles, no doubt of comeback from ACL tear. Um, all right, now let's get into the scoreboard. Today's scoreboard, today is Saturday, uh, February 5th. Heat and the Hornets are playing right now. It is um, tied in the second uh, in the second uh, quarter of the game. Suns are playing the Wizards right now, and it is 57 Suns to 31 Wizards in the second uh, quarter right now. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Grizzlies played the Magic already, and the Grizzlies beat the Magic. Uh, so congrats to the Grizzlies. 135 to 115 was the final on that. And the Knicks played the Lakers tonight at 830 on ABC. The Bucks played the Trailblazers. Um, check your local listings. Thunder played the Kings tonight at 10. Both of those games are at 10. The Bucks and Trailblazers are at 10. Check your local, local listings. And the Thunder and the Kings play tonight at 10 as well. Check your local listings. All right. Um, let's see. Standings. Let's go to the standings. Eastern Conference. Chicago is number one. Salute to Chicago. We get the top five standings. Miami, number two. Cleveland, number three. Milwaukee Bucks, number four. And Philadelphia is number five in the Eastern Conference. Uh, in the Western Conference, Phoenix is number one. Followed by Golden State, then Memphis, Utah, and Dallas to round out the top five of the Western Conference. All right, once again, check your local listings for all things uh, NBA related so you can watch them games tonight. You dig what I'm saying? You dig what I'm saying? Okay, let me do this. Let me see. NFL. 55 Super Bowl rings. 55 story. All right, so let me say full disclaimer. You know, last episode I was real clowning. I was, I, I was clowning. And uh, I had said like three different numbers for the Super Bowl, man. I was like 31, 41, whatever. I didn't even know. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, that was um, the wrong number, obviously. It's the 56. Super Bowl. It's the 56 Super Bowl, y'all. So my bad, my bad. No, I haven't been watching a lot of football. I'm gonna just keep it at that. Um, get ready for the NFL offseason. That's all I'm gonna say. Get ready for the NFL offseason. Um, 
not much to not much to really say about NFL right now. Um, Super Bowl Fifty Six is February Thirteenth. That's next weekend. Next weekend, uh, yeah, man, we we might have a little Super Bowl party. Uh, the Los Angeles Rams versus the Cincinnati Bengals, man. Super Bowl Fifty Six is next weekend. Who y'all got, man? I'm going with Cincinnati Bengals just because it's Midwest. You dig what I'm saying? You dig what I'm saying? All right, uh, we're gonna do level up your lifestyle, and then we gonna get up out of here, man. It is. Saturday, February 5th, uh, I'm going to hit the bar tonight, I ain't been out in a while, I'm going to hit the bar man, that's why I got my, my nice outfit on today, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> I might change my hat, that's about it, um, level up your lifestyle, I'm going to say it like this, sometimes in life, <coughs> sometimes in life, you just need to Hit the reset button. I'm going to say it again. Sometimes in life, you need to hit the reset button. And what I mean by that is any area in your life that you feel you need uh, to level up, per se, sometimes you might just need to hit that reset button, you know what I'm saying, and start all over. Real talk, you know, and ain't nothing wrong with that. Um... I'm currently in the process of hitting the, uh, hitting the restart button by going back to school. You know what I'm saying? That's a good thing to do. Um, this goes and, and follows with last week's Level Up Your Lifestyle where I was telling y'all, you know, uh, to plan, prepare, and persevere. So this week, I'm going to say hit that reset button, man. It's the beginning of the year. It's February. And start off strong. You know what I'm saying? If you're ready to kick them habits, let's go. You know what I'm saying? If you're ready to get uh get physically fit, you know, start now. Shit. Don't wait until springtime. Uh, you can do jumping jacks in the crib. You know what I'm saying? You can do jumping jacks and sit-ups in the crib all day. <laughs> get some type of cardio going. I'm just saying, in life sometimes, instead of, you know, feeling like you need to start from this point, why don't you hit that reset button and start over so that you don't feel so overwhelmed? You know what I mean? Like, Sometimes you might need to uh, uh, find a better career or a better job that's better suited for you. You know, as I was uh, speaking to Sassy, um, she got her choice of a couple jobs. So I want to say salute to Miss Sassy who got, got the damn thing going uh, and got multiple job offers recently. Um, hitting that reset button, starting the new year off fresh. You know, um, and when you got the option of two different jobs, you have to pick the one that is best suited for you overall you know which one you're going to be more comfortable at which one you feel like you can do the best job at and which one you're most passionate about the most you know for real for real excuse me because you're going to do the best job when you're the most passionate about whatever you're doing that's why when i'm doing these podcasts i'm comfortable over here you know what i'm saying because i'm passionate about hip-hop i'm passionate about the culture i'm passionate about the articles that I tend that I that I pick, you know what I'm saying? So and I'm passionate about my music and that's why it shows in the music. It shows in your work. So um hit that reset button and then repeat last week's uh level up your lifestyle plan, prepare and persevere. You feel what I'm saying? You feel what I'm saying? It's not so easy I mean, I know it's it's easier said than done, but sometimes you got to pick up the pieces. You know, once again, hit that reset button, and if you need to uh, give up some habits, or if you want to, uh, you know, pick up a workout regimen, or if you're trying to get your bills and, uh, let's say, debt in order, man, hit that reset button and start today. You know what I'm saying? Make your plan, prepare, and persevere from last week. And then hit that reset button and go to work. You feel what I'm saying? That's all I got for y'all. That was just off the top of the dome. You know, I'm just uh, spitballing, uh, thinking out loud because, uh, you know, I didn't have anything written down for Level Up Your Lifestyle. But I'm going to just go off of last week's and say after plan, persevering, excuse me, after planning, preparing, and persevering, hit that reset button, man, and start from scratch. You know what I'm saying? And, and get it going. Get to work. It's never too late to start over, that's for sure. It's never too late to start over, so that's what I'm going to end with. B-Jack's Hip Hop Shot, episode 70, man. It's never too late to start over. 
That's all we got for today's show, man. We about to be up out of here. I just want to say peace, love, and positivity in the community. Thank you to everybody that is listening, that has been listening. Make sure you hit that like, share, and comment. You know what I'm saying? Subscribe to BJAC TV. Follow us on Anchor.fm, Spotify. Shout out to both Anchor. .fm and Spotify, the app that powers us, the app that we work through is Anchor.fm, salute to them, shout out to them, I love, love, love their format, besides the fact that it's free, <laughs> you gotta love free, I love their format and the fact that I can put uh, previously recorded materials into the podcast through them, them. and um, I can also add music from Spotify or add my own music to it, and uh, they still pay me for it, so you know, <laughs> you gotta love that. So the anchor.fm Spotify man, your boy Big B Jack. I'm up out of here, man. Episode number 70, level up your lifestyle. We up out of here. Thank you to the fans, followers for listening. Like, share, comment, subscribe, all of that. I'm out. Holla black. Peace, love, positivity. B Jack said pop shot. Baby, baby. We'll be back next week. We'll be back next week with two new episodes for you. Y'all know what to do. We up out of here. Be Jackson Pop Shop. Peace.